afternoon. The September 10, 2020 policy work session to discuss policy 8420.02, emergency policy requiring face coverings, is now in session. The emergency policy became effective on August 11, 2020, and is being revised so that it can remain in effect after its initial 90 days have expired and to be in compliance with applicable Florida law. Sam, roll call, please. Mrs. Belford? Present. Mrs. Campbell? Present. Mrs. Deskovich? Present. Ms. McDougall? Present. And Mr. Susan? Present. Thank you. We will now say the Pledge of Allegiance. Robin Novelli, Chief Operating Officer, will provide us the executive summary on the policy. Mr. Novelli. Paul Gibbs may be here also virtually. Paul, are you there? I am. All right. Very good. So glad to have you in the background. Um, I've passed out to each of the board members a hard copy of uh, the policy. And as Ms. Belford uh, had already said, this policy was adopted by the school board on August the 11th as an emergency board policy due to the current coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. And that the superintendent found that it is that there is an eminent danger and a need to protect public health, safety, and or welfare posed by the COVID-19. The emergency policy as adopted governs the conduct of staff, students, visitors, and vendors in the district facility. And so uh, the point here is to make what was a temporary emergency uh, permanent um, before the 90 day period uh, is conclusion. So this is a little different than what we normally do with policies. Uh, so uh, what we've done this time is we've listed as the current version, the actual emergency policy. And so you'll find that uh, in your packet is the first part of that and what the way the emergency policy was written. We have that listed as the current. And then you'll see Neola's template uh, for that information there. Uh, and then if you go on to the red line version, what you'll see is that there have been a number of things that have been uh, taken out uh, that no longer applicable since it's no longer temporary and a few additions uh, that were added. Juanita also took the opportunity to make this like the other policies that we have updated recently and put in the outlining format so that we can refer to paragraphs easily. And you'll see in paragraph G, there was some input there. It's actually highlighted as well as underlined or uh, those parts that were stricken. And that part was provided by cabinet as a slight addition to some information about face shields. And then after that, you'll see a clean version of the proposed policy. This is the work session and uh, whatever other input that you have, we'll make those changes for the next time around at the workshop. Thank you, Mr. Novelli. Uh, any board members have questions, comments, requests? Ms. Campbell? Um, so first of all, just because I, I, if for those who are watching, I don't want people to get the idea because you just said the word permanent. That means we're making um, facial coverings permanent, but we are having a permanent policy to deal with um, when we need to have temporary use Excellent of point. face coverings. Excellent point. Excellent choice of words on my part. I That's, right. Yes, That's right. Because if you see it towards the end of that, uh, there's language about how the superintendent and or board would conclude uh, right. that type of a uh, policy if it were ha if it had to be put again in place. Right. So the, the, the one um, point in here that I would love for us to, maybe I, I, I could get some clarification on why we're using this particular wording or maybe we can make it a little clearer, is in, let me get my letters right, F, F1C, all student face coverings shall comply with the school's dress code for shirts. I, I've already seen that come up in a few um, emails or concerns, and I understand the, the, the idea behind it is 
that if we have a rule that you can't have a shirt that says, you know, that um, advertises drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, whatever, then you also can't have a face mask or if it has obscenity. But I think that's maybe a little confusing. I, I think maybe we can, if we could, we be more clear with that or, because the other thing is some schools are like our, our district dress code doesn't say shirts, it says upper garments, but we also have that, like you can't wear pants with that on there either. So I'm just not sure if that's the right wording for that. And I, I had a note to bring that up to Ms. Campbell, so thank you for, for uh, calling attention to that. I looked at our student code of conduct this morning, and mm -hmm. actually it is the accessories portion of our student code of conduct right. that addresses any inappropriate advertising statements, right. those sorts of things. So I think if we, with the school's dress code for accessories, I think would actually incorporate the language that we're meaning to incorporate. Right. Okay. Because if the point is that it, the, the wording or the imagery that's on, that's, you know, the, the way that it looks, it's not a matter of how thick the straps are or anything like that right. that would relate right. to Right, good point. Like well, then we'll go back and study those exact words in the student conduct and we'll use the same wording here. Perfect, thank you, okay. Mr. Novelli. Any other board members have any other items to discuss on the policy language? Um, I have just a, a couple, um, and this might actually be a question for Mr. Gibbs, but on item C, um, it says that the superintendent working with the DOH may activate the policy by notifying the school community of the implementation, and then he will place the measure on the next available board meeting agenda. So my question is, does that mean that activation of the policy is pending board approval, or can the superintendent go ahead and activate the policy Kind of like when we hire, right? We put right. people into their position and then the board doesn't approve them until later. Right, yeah, the intent was that if in conjunction with the DOH, they say we need the policy in place, he can activate it immediately and then he brings it to the next meeting for board approval to continue it. So can we stick in immediately after may activate this policy? I just don't want it to be perceived that the superintendent has to bring it to the board before we can put it in place if it's in the best interest of our students to go ahead and do that. All right, I will certainly stick it in there. Uh, I'll add uh, the word immediately after may activate. We're after the word policy. Yeah, may activate this policy immediately by yep. notifying, yep. Okay. Perfect. And then on item G, um, I love that we are clarifying that face shields should not be used in lieu of masks except in situations where instruction is needed for effective instruction, I guess. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if it would not be more efficient for us to say face shields may be used by persons to comply, this pol comply with this policy when the instruction requires the ability to see the face of the student and or teacher. Because I think our, the current confusion around face shields is that first sentence, if that makes sense. All right, so you said when the instruction requires? The ability to see, the, like the rest of that last sentence, the okay. ability to see the face of the student and or teacher. So are you saying you don't want to include the first sentence, you don't want to allow face shields? to be used to comply with this policy? Yes, yeah, so the, the point of the, the face, face Shields Act technically can be used as an accommodation for someone who has medical restriction as well, right? But the perception, just because people see this first sentence is, I just don't feel like wearing a, a mask and so I'm just gonna wear a face shield. And I think that's, where a lot of the confusion has come from because we know that masks do not provide the same level of protection. They, masks provide a different, I'm sorry, face shields provide a different level of protection. So face shields provide additional protection for the person wearing them to provide eye protection, but they are not as effective at stopping droplet spread. So ideally you wear a face mask for your protection to keep your eyes and you wear a mask to prevent spread to others. And I think there's been an enormous amount of confusion around that portion of the policy. So 
are you just striking the very first sentence? My, I mean, we certainly we can talk about it. My recommendation would be to take the part of the first sentence and part of the second sentence. So in the first sentence, face shields may be used by persons to comply with this policy and then move down to the second sentence when the instruction, and I'm not sure why we have supports. It seems like requires would be more appropriate. The ability to see the face of the student and or the teacher. So we're actually taking out the first part of the second sentence. Mm -hmm. I think that, oh, I think that additional, I think it just ties right in here. Because I think that was a her, was her proposed change. Um, yeah, I think she was, she was proposing the change to clear up that confusion because I know we've gotten a lot of feedback on that. So I'm just thinking about current practice. I mean, I, um, have an elementary school student right now who we, we provided face shields for every elementary school student up through sixth grade um, so that they can use, and he uses his interchange, I mean, he has his mask, he gets on with a mask, but he has a shield and he can use that in certain circumstances throughout the day and he just kind of swaps them out as needed. Um, you know, face shields, I, I understand and agree, you know, it's a different kind of protection, but I, you know, when, when I've, what I've heard from um, even some of our pediatric infectious disease specialists over in the is the one who did the presentation that um, for the school nurses in Orange County, he talked about, you know, we have to look at good, better, best. I think about some of our primary students whose parents, who we have said, right, it's strongly encouraged, it's not the same requirement for our pre-K through second grade students. Um, but some of them are using face shields because they're at a young age, it's easier for something easier for them to do. Um, if we take this out, um, we, I, I don't know, I kind of like the way that it is because we're able to, we're able to make it a broader, um, it's giving more people the ability to comply with the policy who are having a hard time with it, just to be completely honest. So I, I think the, I understand where you're coming from. I, I think it's confusing to say that they meet the requirement and then they only meet the requirement in this situation because that's basically what it says is they're allowed to be worn when instruction warrants it, right? Yeah. If, so if they're re receiving speech therapy or if they're working on phonics or if they're working on any of those things, that's what the second sentence says basically. Okay. But I, I think the confusion is coming in with the first sentence. So our, our primary kids who are K, pre-K to two, we have just a strong recommendation for them. For three through six, if it's instructionally warranted for them to do the shields, absolutely. I think, I, I, don't, I personally don't see that we're really changing practice. the, yeah, I don't think we're changing practice. I think we're just clearing up confusion. Okay. Um, because we have, I'll tell you, we have a lot of teachers that are walking around just wearing face shields. Um, and that, I think, is concerning unless it's an accommodation. So the, the cloth section isn't clear on the level of cloth. I mean, if we're gonna start getting down in the nitty gritty and micromanaging, We've got people using spandex over their face. I mean, if you really want to be severe, I'm willing to bet that spandex is doing less than a face shield. And yet, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty and say what kind of cloth you need. So it just, so much of this doesn't make sense to me. It's like we grab this, we grab that, we don't care about this, so we feel like we're doing something. If we care, we care. If we don't, we don't. And if we're now going to, the few people that are left and, and able to deal with this by using a face shield to calm their anxieties, we're now going to say, no, you have to have something touching your face, which may do less than the face shield because it makes somebody else feel better. It's super frustrating to me. So I get your frustration, Ms. Duskovich, and I, I, you know, I would just remind that we've got, we still have 
the exceptions where people can certainly wear a face shield if they are more comfortable with that and they have except, you know, documented exceptions. All, all of, I mean, there are A through I of, of exceptions there. So I'm, I don't think, at least, and it's not my interpretation, if, it, if someone else has a different interpretation, I certainly would love to hear. Um, I don't think that G applies excluding the exceptions. So I don't think the G is saying, well, even though you have an exception, you have to follow this. The exceptions are there, but where we have an enormous amount of confusion is the expectation that people wear masks except when the instructional need is there for them to be able to see mouth or if the exceptions are there for, for medical, psychological, all of those issues I think still apply. So we don't include just, we don't include face shields in F, which is the types of face coverings, but then we have G that says, oh, and you can have these too. So I, I get why it's confusing. Paul, you have any? Um, <coughs> My, uh, what I recall from, what I recall from the uh, emergency adoption hearings on this policy is that the majority of the board wanted to allow face shields. That's why it was worded the way it was. Because okay. if you look at, if you take the red line out, we were saying faculty are encouraged to use a face shield in lieu of a mask when instruction required the student to see the teacher's face. So that was kind of the exception for masks for teachers. The rest of it, from what I recall was we were okay with students being able to wear face shields to comply. If the board wants to change it to say we don't want to allow face shields to comply with it unless that circumstance is there, then that's fine. It's up to the board. It's your policy. So this is going to be here long term. If this ever crops up or another illness comes out and we need to impose this, this is what we're going to be using. And without getting too much in the weeds, let me give you another example of a time when the face shields are being used. Uh, on our playground, sometimes outside, the kids are using the face shields instead of a mask. Personally, I don't have a problem with that because we're outdoors. It's frustrating for many parents that they have to be wearing them at all when it's so hot and they're outdoors and they're socially distanced. And so schools are doing different things depending on how socially distanced they are. Um, but some of them are going ahead and using a face shield because then at least you're not quite so sweaty. You still have some air circulation, but you've got something on. Um, that, if we take this first sentence out or we change it, then we're not allowing that anymore. So just because that wouldn't, there's not really an ability, there's not necessarily an, an instructional reason to have a face shield on at the time. You're out on the playground. There's not instruction necessarily going on unless you're in PE. Um, so... I don't think, though, Ms. Campbell, that <clears throat> the policy reads that if they are outside and socially distanced, they're not required to have a mask. So I would suggest that if they're outside and socially distanced and they have them wear a face shield, they're just taking an extra layer of protection. I don't think we're prohibiting them from using face shields in that situation if they are socially distanced. Do we have something specifically describing what you just mentioned? Because I don't see an exception. Obviously, our policy just in general says when you can't maintain social distance, or when you can maintain, so, you know, that you have to wear a face covering when you can't maintain social distancing, or as right. much as feasible, right? Um, but we do have schools that have, and they may be changing those if, if with a greater understanding of the policy, but we do have schools that are requiring their kids to keep their face coverings on when they go out on the playground. talk about generous physical activity shall not be required for anything inside uh, or outside. Oh, your microphone? Yeah. No, it's not on. <laughs> so we do talk about strenuous physical activity. A face covering shall not be required for any person inside or outside of any school district facility while such persons engage in strenuous physical activity, which would be recess, quite frankly, because they run around. So, nice. yeah, so it's not required. So, and that's in... Our emergency policy, I'm assuming, is in this current policy, it is. too. It's in there, E1H. So, I have a 
question. Are we concerned that people are abusing this? Is that what your concern is? Because I, I, I think that I, I agree with Ms. Campbell with, um, I rather have some people use a face shield than nothing. Um, and if that makes them more comfortable, our students um, doesn't give them the best protection. It really, um, they're more vulnerable. But I do feel that it allows them that choice. I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned that people are abusing it. I'm concerned that people don't understand the difference okay. in the level of protection. And um, as I said, I, there are, I have gotten multiple emails from teachers who are concerned that their peers are just wearing a face shield throughout the day okay. in all interactions um, and they're concerned for their own safety. So I think- I get that just making sure that, you know, yes, there are times when it's appropriate. If you're right. utilizing the face shield as an accommodation, if you're utilizing a face shield while you're working on instruction, you know, that, that speech therapy or you need to, to see phonics, letter sounds, those types of things, I think that, at least my under, was my understanding of the original intent okay. on the face shields was there are times when it's appropriate, but not that it necessarily be used in lieu of um, mask all the time. And that's true because I know we talked about being able to purchase masks that had the clear, clear yeah. face, um, face so people could read other people's lips. Yeah. So I don't want to take anything away. I mean, I, like I said, we have, we have the exceptions. We have, you know, the, I just think it's incredibly confusing as it's worded. If it needs to be more clear, we can make it more clear, but I would not be in favor of making it more restrictive. So is it your perception that that is making it more restrictive by taking out, by blending the first and second sentence? Mm -hmm. Yes. I do think so. I, I do understand your confusion on the support of the support because I, Seems like it's the other way around. Right. When it needs to be supported by um, by having a face shield. Um, maybe that's just not the same way I, re I use that word. But no, uh, I, I, I. Go ahead. I would agree that uh, I would agree that if we if we combine those two sentences, it would be a restrictive use of face shield where you can only use them when you're doing that activity that requires the ability to see the face. Paul, do you know what the origin of the um, supports, when the instruction supports the ability to see? Because I think that was... The, the red line stuff came from Ms. Klein. Okay. She red, line, she red lined all that in there. If you take that out, that was the original. I, I cut and pasted our original emergency in under Neola's opening paragraph. The, the first three there at the top, A, B, C, are Neola's. I tweaked it a little bit. But uh, starting with D is the meat of our emergency policy. Okay. All right, so is it consensus from the board then to keep it as it is and just change supports to requires? Yeah. Say that again. To change when the instruction supports the ability to see to change when the instruction requires the ability to see. I like that better. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. Anyone else wanna weigh in? Okay. So we're going to change the word supports to requires and leave everything else as it is? Yes, for that item G. Okay. We're good. Anything else? Anyone else have anything else? All right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, the workshop is now adjourned.